MRF HIV SCIF. This is our first session for the calendar year 2024, even though our first official session for this season will be in November of last year. Um, we were not able to have any other sessions due to cut like Christmas and maybe a falling essential days. We supposed to have every session. So this is our first ability to greet you for the new year. I hope everything is well with everyone. To my right is Dr. Jeffrey Edwards, who will be joining us uh, to give us our uh, first didactic presentation for the year on the first two cases of monkeypox in Trinidad and Tobago, which actually is a topic of a recent publication at uh, Ember for the um, gotten accepted for publication. Um, so I'm not going to talk too much about it. I'll let Dr. Edwards um, begin his presentation, and I hope um, you will be interested. And if you have any questions, make sure to ask. And again, Conrad, greetings for the new year, and I shall start the presentation shortly. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. So I'm going to talk today about the first two cases of MPOX that we had in Trinidad. Um, hopefully, all we're going to share the screen now so you can see what's happening. Right, so everybody should be seeing the screen now. So we're going to talk about the first two cases of MPOX in Trinidad. And I'll just give you a, a brief overview of what, 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 what we saw and what happened. So MPOX is a viral zoonotic disease that occurs primor primarily in the tropical rainforest of Central and West Africa. It belongs to the Autopox genus, which also includes variola virus, uh, which is the um, smallpox virus, the vaccinia virus, which is the smallpox vaccine, and the cowpox virus. It was first isolated in 1958, when they found the pox-like disease in monkeys, which was kept for research in a Denmark laboratory, all right? Hence the name monkeypox, because it was first seen in monkeypox. But this was stigmatized, and so they've, they've since changed the name from monkeypox to mpox. The first human case of NPOX was identified in 1970. There are two strains of the virus, clade one, which is the Congo-based, North Central African um, strain, which is associated with more uh, severe disease. And clade two is a West African strain, which is associated with less severe disease. Next one. The incubation period is about three to 17 days and the illness can last anywhere from about two to four weeks. The common symptoms include fever, headache, sore throat, muscle pain, back pain, skin rash, um, mucosal lesions and, and swollen lymph glands, uh, lymphadenopathy, which is a feature of MPOX. Next one. So how is it transmitted? Uh, it could be transmitted from human to human via direct or indirect contact with the body fluids or the lesion materials of a person who has MPOX, exposure to respiratory secretions or contact with fomites, so like bed um, towels and bedded material and stuff, okay? And pregnant women may pass the virus onto their unborn baby. New data show that some people can spread MPOX to others from one to four days before their symptoms uh, develop. The good thing about MPOX is not easily transmitted. So it's not easily transmitted like COVID-19. So we wouldn't have expected a huge you know, um, pandemic like COVID-19. Next one. In terms of the clinical features, um, in the context of the global outbreak of MPOX, uh, which began in 19, sorry, 2022 and was caused by the clade 2B virus, this illness began differently in some people. In just over half the cases, the rash may appear before or at the same time of the, as the symptoms, and the rash doesn't really go all over the body. The first lesion could be the groin, the anus, or sometimes around the mouth. Some persons may have a, a proctitis, which is a kind of painful swelling of the rectum. Next one. So what's over there, the, the characteristic rash? It could be flat, which is a macule, raised, a papula vesicle with fluid in it, pustule with pus, and then crests over, and then, you know, um, kind of heals over. 
They may be deep-seated, firm, well-circumscribed with central umbilication. I'll show you what that looks like. And the rash is often present on the palms of the hands and soles of the feet. Pain and itching may be present. So the, this patient is infectious. Once the symptoms begin, um, uh, so the fever and the sore throat and stuff, until the lesion scab, the scab falls off and a new layer of skin has formed underneath. So a 53-year-old man, uh, there's a man who has sex with, with men. He was seen on Saturday, July 8, 2023, and he was worried about being exposed to STI. He was totally asymptomatic, no signs and symptoms. He said his sex partner was treated for gonorrhea and chlamydia. So, you know, um, he came in for empiric treatment. So I gave him some keftriaxone injection and some doxycycline for, for the um, chlamydia. His partner, uh, AA, was also came with him and he complained of severe perianal pains. And when I examined him, he had some shallow ulcers around the anal area. All right. I thought it may have been herpes simplex, so I treated him with acyclovir. On Sunday, the next day, July the night, the patient sent me a WhatsApp photo of an asymptomatic lesion that he said just developed suddenly on his penis. And I thought it looked funny. So I said, okay, well, I mean, not sure what it is. Uh, can you send me another photo the next day, which is July the 10th, and we see how the lesions progressed. So you can see the first uh, lesion there was a kind of umbilicated lesion. You see there's a dent in the center, all right? And you can see by the Monday, the lesion had progressed even more. And I thought this was suspicious for monkeypox or mpox. So I had to get all the swabs and stuff, all right? So I called up the people at the public health lab and told them I probably have a person with suspected um, mpox. So they sent me the swabs and the viral culture media. Next one. All right. And I asked the patient to come and see me on the Tuesday. All right. To be screened. He later called me back and said, you know, he talked to his private doctor and his private doctor told them that his symptoms are consistent with gonorrhea. But, you know, gonorrhea usually presents with a discharge, you know, not a genital ulcer. So I told the person that, you know, um, this is most probably not gonorrhea, you know, and he should really come and see me. And he reluctantly came in. In addition, I asked him, I said, listen, any of your partners have, your recent sexual partners, has any genital or inner lesions or lesions on the hands or feet? Let me know now. If there are any, just take a photo and bring for me. Okay? Right. All right. So public health lab sent me um, the, the swabs, you can see the viral transport media in the tube, a screw tap cap tube, and a biohazard bag. All right, next one. So in terms of patients who collect um, samples from a, a, a patient, from, from a healthcare worker, sorry, who collect samples from patients with MPOX, they should use PPE. And of course, that time we're in the full COVID, so... I was making sure I used my mask and gloves and, and stuff. The best diagnostic specimens are taken directly from the rash, the skin, fluid, or the crust, and usually collected by vigorous swabbing using that sterile polyester or decron swabs, all right? When you do that, you put it, you unscrew the, the, the container, you put, put the swab in and you break off the, um, the, 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 each swab, all right, in the viral transport media. And ideally, ideally, they like to, 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 to use more than one lesion, all right? Um, preferably from different parts of the body. Uh, MPOX is usually diagnosed by PCR, okay? And CAFA does this. So when case one came in and I spoke to him, he had four MSM partners with, with, with whom he had recent contact. Two of them, AA and NN, all right? These are his regular partners, so they are three seven. And then the other two, DD and BF, are a couple who they all have sex with. So it's a kind of five seven that they have, right? The patient indicated that AA was symptomatic. And when I saw him, he's the one who had the painful perianal lesions. NN had flu-like symptoms, but he had no skin lesions. DD had skin lesions and BF had skin lesions. 
He indicated that all five of them had sexual contact with a male at MSM who had recently returned from Mexico, all right? Two days after arrival in, in, in TNT, they had sex with him. However, this person claimed he was vaccinated for Mpox in the USA in July 2022, and he was totally asymptomatic. Next one. And you can see um, this is the patient's partners, all right? One of the partners, you can see he has these pustules on the, the, the fourth finger of the hand, you know, there. Yeah. And that's the dorsum, and he also had one on the palm of the hand, all right? So once I saw that, I was pretty certain that, you know, the, um, it was Mpox I was dealing with. Next one. All right, so on examination, when the patient came in, he had this umbilical lesion, all right, on the penis, and he had uh, right in guida lymph and up, the swelling of the right uh, lymph node. Next one. So what I did was I, I took a swab from him, all right, and I, I jumped in my car and took it over to public health lab, all right, and they, they said they would send it to cop and I would get a result in about four or three hours. When I came back to the office, um, Dr. Janet Charles from QPCC called and she said, Doc, you know, I have a patient with a strange rash. I want to send him to you. So I said, well, send him. I mean, you know, I'm thinking, well, hopefully, you know, lightning already strike twice in one day. I can't have another patient with Mpox again, okay? So the patient came across and he had a history of fever and body pain for so two days. This began on July the 2nd, all right? This resolved and then it was followed by a rash. The rash began in the perianal area around the anus, all right, and then spread to the penis, the trunk, and the fingers. And the rash in the perianal was quite painful, and that reminded me of um, that first patient, you know, his partner who had this painful perianal rash. This patient also had inguinal uh, and axillary, so in the groin and in the armpits, his lymph nodes were swollen. Next one. So you can see he had these. Uh, ulcers around the anus, so the perianal ulcers, which are painful. You also had two ulcers on the penis. You can see one here, another one here. And he had some vesicular lesions on the thumb here. All right, and next one. And you can see he also had a pustule on the third finger, and you can see the two vesicular lesions on the thumb. So. When I saw this, I really, again, suspected monkeypox, mpox, all right? And you also had this pustular lesion on the trunk, one lesion surrounded by erythema redness. So I took a swab from this lesion here, and I took a swab from the uh, ulcers in the anus, all right? Uh, put it into the viral transport media. Again, jumped into my car, took it across the public health lab, and they told me, well, this one kind of reached late, so I'll get it the following day, all right? About three hours after they called me back and said, um, the first patient tested positive for Mpox, the West African um, strain, which is the less severe strain. And he was actually the first case of Mpox in Trinidad and Tobago. Next one. And then the next day, um, they called me again, and the second patient was also positive for Mpox. Um, again, the same West African strain. So that was the second case of Mpox in Trinidad and Tobago. All right. Uh, on July 12th, which is about uh, two days later, the patient called me and he complained that's case one of headache, fever, malaise, chills. This lasted for about two days and then resolved. All right. And then he also noted he had redness in the groin, and the groin area was much less tender. Next one. Um, at this stage, um, his HIV was negative, and the syphilis test was non-reactive. So because he tested positive for Mpox, I asked you know, if I could give permission to give his contact information to the Ministry of Health. He was very hesitant. He said, Doc, I'm an MSM, you know. People discriminate against me, you know. I'm the first case of Mpox in Trinidad. And I mean, why, why bother? We have no treatment for Mpox in Trinidad at this time. Uh, indicated, well, we try, we need, we really need to try and get this um, outbreak under control, you know. So we need to track down all the contacts and, you know, um, put them in quarantine or isolation. So 
he reluctantly agreed, but he indicated that his other his four other partners, they did not give permission to give their names out to the Ministry of Health. All right, so I gave his contact information to the county, the, the county medical officer of health, and he advised the patient to go into isolation for 21 days. So what they did was the entire group of five of them rented a property in the country, and they stayed there for 21 days. Uh, the the um, Ministry of Health did contact tracing and any of the contacts to offer the MPOX vaccine, all right? And even healthcare workers they even offered me if I wanted the, um, the MPOX vaccine because they had a stockpile of 2,300 vaccines in uh, Trinidad for MPOX. Case one gave me daily updates and sent me photos of how his uh, condition was progressing, and I'll show you some of these now. Uh, on July the 13th, Pride organization, they put out um, something on Facebook, you know, um, alerting their members about MPOX, you know, since we had two cases, and um, tell them to be more or less careful. Then, next one, you can see by the 15th, you can see the ulcer on the penis, and I mean, you can really tell now, this was an umbilicated ulcer. I mean, it was clear now that this was, we did not MPOX. Next one. And then the patient called me and he said, Doc, you know, I'm still getting um, WhatsApp messages, even though we have two cases of MPOX for all these sex parties, you know, so he was quite worried about it. And, you know, you can see here that um, they're still having these sex parties. Uh, so he was really worried about it. All right, so we needed to do some work in the MSM community because, you know, um, there's, a, there's an outbreak of MPOX and, you know, people are still having going to sex parties. You can see on July the 22nd, the lesion was beginning to heal. All right, next one. And the 28th, you can see it's almost totally healed. And the next one, and you can see by August 31st, all right, it was totally healed over, and you can see it with a depressed scar, all right? So again, um, his lesion was totally healed, so he was no longer infectious. After 21 days, he came out of isolation. Next one. So going back to case two now. Case two had one MSM partner with, with whom he had recent sexual contact. This partner was HIV infected, and he was on antiretroviral therapy. However, this partner was asymptomatic. The patient also indicated that there were five persons with whom he had close contact. I, I tried to find out what close contact was, but he wasn't willing. He just said close contact over the past four weeks and all were asymptomatic. Um, he was open to follow up by the Ministry of Health. All right, so I gave his name, his contact information, and he got a quarantine letter for 21 days. And a few of his, um, a few of his contacts were, were contacted and they, they, some of them actually received the MPOX vaccine. Next one. You can see this, the MPOX vaccine is a genius vaccine. It's given intradermally, just right under the skin there, you can see. And two doses are usually given um, four weeks apart. And in the, in the big countries, in Europe and the USA, um, a lot of the MSM went and got the, um, the vaccine, all right? And this played a big part in reducing the outbreak of MPOX. Next one. And you can see um, once the lesion healed, you can see the two dark spots here on the arm. So you can tell that the patient received the MPOX vaccine. As a matter of fact, about... 10 weeks later, another patient came in one of these and I said, hey, you received the MPOX vaccine. He said, no, how you know? Because, you know, I saw the, 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 the dark spot on the arm, on, on the forearm, sorry. So this is how the lesion heals. And once you get a vaccine, I mean, it really prevents them from getting MPOX. Next one. This case two is also HIV negative and VDR non-reactive. He also gave me daily updates and photos of how his condition was progressing. He remained at home in isolation for 21 days and he, he had no foods or anything. So his friends had to bring him lots of the food stuff. Next one. And you can see the two lesions on the, the penis here. By the 15, they started to heal. All right. Next one. The perianal lesions on the anus. You can see the lesions are healing as July the 15th. Next one. 
Uh, the ones on the fingers took a little longer to heal here. And the ones on the thumb, again, now started to heal not as quickly as the ones in the genital areas. Next one. And you can see by the 20th, the lesions around the anus were totally healed. All right? But 21st, you can see the lesions on the thumb slowly start. All right. Next one. 21st, again, you can see the lesions slowly healing. And uh, next one. By the 22nd, the lesions on the penis was totally healed. And by the 31st of July, you can see the lesions on the fingers were totally healed and this patient was no longer infectious. Next one. All right, so that is our um, cases of MPOX and Trinidad. They were treated with conservative therapy. They stayed home. All right, uh, they got better. Contact tracing was done. Uh, contacts, uh, all of them were asymptomatic. They were given the uh, offer the vaccine. Some of them took it uh, in Trinidad. And we had two more cases of MPOX in July and then four cases overall. And that was it. The outbreak died out. Uh, and we have had no more cases of MPOX. And so uh, luckily, the Ministry of Health did an excellent job in terms of quarantine, you know, isolation of those patients who had MPOX giving the vaccine to, to, to those contacts. And um, somehow we are able to uh, control the, the outbreak of MPOX. We never know the source though, because um, those two cases were not related to one another. So they were not epidemiology linked to one another. So we never knew the source, but again, we've had no further cases. So that's it. Hopefully we won't see no more cases of MPOX again. And these photos, are unique in that, you know, they were the first two cases and hopefully we never see this disease again. So I'd like to thank you. And if there are any questions, uh, feel free to um, ask for me, all right? So dermatologists or patients that have a high index of suspicion, if patients have, you know, um, lesions in the genital or mucosal areas, the hands and feet and the trunk, all right? Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Edwards. So, Colonel, you have your hand there? Yes, I do. Thanks so much for this, Dr. Edwards. This was a really interesting session. Um, what struck me is because the legions themselves are so unassuming, uh, as we kind of get ready for the carnival season, should persons come in for, should we still encourage persons to come in for MPOX vaccinations? Um, so again, the Ministry of Health would would would, would give it. Uh, they had twenty three hundred vaccines. So I mean, uh, in the in Europe and in the US and stuff, they gave it to, to all MSM. But in Trinidad, because we when we had a small supply, they were giving it to contacts and healthcare workers who came in contact with with or who examined the patient. So I'm not sure that they actually given it out to everybody, you know. But agree if we had a, a stock, if we had a, a large supply. I recommend that people take it, you know, because it may be still out there, you know, and lots of people coming in for carnival, lots of mixing, so anything can happen, you know. Actually, that was kind of the important question I was going to ask. But yes, carnival is coming in, but there's going to be a large influx. Should we do some resensitization? Like, look, this thing is still around. We have lots of people coming in from away, maybe a long or. I know. So, again, not only MPOX, like COVID. We've been seeing an increase in COVID cases too. So again, I think the Ministry of Health could probably do some sensitization for both COVID and MPOX, you know, so that people will be aware. There's not a Sahara dust, so what people are wearing the masks, which again would hopefully um, protect them from COVID, but COVID is around. And as I say, I, I think they should do some sensitization for MPOX, you know? Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions out there? As I said, the patient was, was quite, you know, um, I don't too sure if they're still having sex parties and stuff because that was since last year. Maybe now they may still be having them. So again, you know, with all these people coming in and they're still having the sex parties, then we probably need to, 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 to do some sensitization, you know? I, I think definitely because historically, as we get closer to carnival, the sex parties increase with so many persons coming in from abroad. So definitely within 
within the NGOs and stuff like that, we should definitely be sharing the information that MPOX is still around and that COVID is still around. And I will definitely make sure that I personally share this video around once the video is edited so persons are aware that we should still be looking out. I see right. it in the chat. Um, Peter says, thanks for a very comprehensive presentation. Very informative. The internet was dropping, but he still agreed it was very great. Pass over to Dr. Cebu. I was just following up in terms of what, what you're speaking about, in terms of perhaps the opportunity to to kind of have that kind of conversation with with a with an NGO group via maybe an NGO led town hall, um, to kind of sensitize, yes, um, carnival is coming, lots of people are coming from abroad. Have you had your flu shot? Please be aware of if you have any new, you know, MPOX, those kind of things. So at least people know to be have take precautions and or if something ha is happening to present so that they can still be aware, people can still be aware of the COVID um, um, influenza stuff that all these things that are circulating right now. So that opportunity, I think, perhaps could be pursued. Right. And, and actually some of the doctors, because a couple of doctors have actually sent me um some skin lesions, but I think it was chicken pox. So they are sensitized. So they're seeing people with strange lesions and they're actually swabbing them. With chicken pox, um, they swap them for M pox, it was negative. But again, so people are, are at least the physicians are more sensitized now because it's close to carnival, you know. All right, well, again, thanks for that presentation. Thanks for all the excellent questions. Mm -hmm.